In this video we're going to find an approximate qu equation for moment curvature so we can see how different uh, properties will affect um, our, our moment curvature behavior. Uh, so first let's look at our moment curvature which is our phi max over phi y. Um, so first we can plug in uh, simple expressions for phi max and phi y. We can remember that uh, our phi max is equal to our epsilon c max over kd uh, at max time, and then our eps, uh, our phi y is equal to our epsilon y in the steel um, times the distance from the neutral axis to the depth of the steel, which is d minus kd at time y. Rearranging will give us epsilon c max times d minus kd at uh, yield over kd max times epsilon y. Now we know that our kd max is just equal to our uh, C and we'll find that using ACI. So this is this will be our first step. And we can find C using equilibrium. So we'll use tension equal to compression. So our tension is AS FY. Our compression is 0 0.85 F prime C times B times beta 1 C. Next we can divide both sides by BD to uh, give us things in terms of rho. So we'll then we'll have rho times Fy is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C beta 1 C over D. We can then rearrange um, our expression and solve for C and find our C equal to rho Fy times D over 0.85 F prime C times beta 1. So we'll also need to know um, or remember our K which if we remember our K was equal to the square root of n, our modular ratio, times rho squared plus 2n times rho minus n times rho. And then we'll also need to know, which I'll write down here as well, um, that our epsilon y, or uh, the steel, or the strain in the steel is equal to yield epsilon y which is equal to Fy over ES. Now we can plug all of these expressions into our uh, moment curvature expression that we have above. So substituting in all of our values will give us this expression where our um, curvature ductility is equal to our 0 0.003 over our C expression that we substituted in. Um, times d minus kd, which we substituted in our, our expression for k, uh, divided by our uh, yield strain. So we can simplify uh, our curvature ductility um, and we'll get this expression here. And then we'll need to make an approximation. Um, so the first thing is our rho n will be significantly less than 1 and our rho n will also be less than our uh, square root of n times rho squared minus 2n rho expression. So if we make these assumptions, what will happen is, uh, so if our rho n is uh, significantly less than 1, then if we're squaring it, we can essentially uh, say we're eliminating that. And if our rho n is also less than our square root of um, rho n squared minus np or n rho squared plus 2n rho, 
then we can eliminate this second term. So that allows us to uh, come to the simplified expression we see below. Um, and, and we can see now, so this will be our, our general relationship uh, to find our curvature ductility. And we can see a couple things. Uh, so the first, if we want to increase our curvature ductility, we can decrease our reinforcement ratio. We can also increase our f prime c. Although if we increase our f prime c, we're also going to decrease our beta one. Uh, and the last thing that we can do is we can decrease our f y, and uh, these things will equal an increased curvature ductility. Uh, so you can see that none of these things are really beneficial. We you can't generally decrease our reinforcement ratio because we need our reinforcement ratio for strength. Uh, we generally, or increasing our, our concrete strength is going to decrease our beta 1, so we'll be fighting ourselves there. And if we decrease our Fy, we're also going to decrease our strength. Um, so this brings us to um, one of the reasons why we need uh, to add compression reinforcement to increase our curvature ductility.